Oh, hello there. Um, today I wanted to talk about Call of Duty World War II, uh, scheduled for release uh, November 3rd. Uh, it'll be available for every major console. Uh, I will be getting it for the PlayStation 4. Um, it's the first World War II uh, video game from Call of Duty that's been made for a while. Uh, Ten years, as a matter of fact. Um, I rather enjoyed uh, World at War. I thought it was a spectacularly well-made video game. I had many, many hours of fun playing that. Um, the storyline for it was quite good. Uh, I had noticed that uh, a lot of the Call of Duty video games have interesting storylines. Um, I don't exactly remember any of the other ones quite as well as I remember World at War. Um, basically there are two campaigns in World at War. There's the uh, Americans versus the Japanese with the island hopping. Um, basic World War II history there. And there's also the uh, Soviets uh, versus the Germans and them invading Berlin. Um, I hadn't remembered uh, the video games from before that well, uh, so I had to read up on it, and uh, the first one, according to their website, was released in 2003. Uh, these video games over the years, I had seen a lot of them, but it wasn't actually me playing them most of the time, because uh, my younger brother, like, he always hogged the video games, and that was just the way it was. He, he wouldn't share. Uh, I was fine with it, because I was never that good at, you know, intricate little, like, playing video games and sniping and tactics, and uh, I was just never that good at playing video games. Like, uh, I enjoyed playing them, but I never quite had the skill to be an elite gamer. Uh, but uh, I consider it more of an interactive movie that you're a part of, rather than an actual video game. So that's why I'm excited for this uh, new Call of Duty, and the graphics I've seen for it, um, yeah, they, they look amazing. Um, the thing I don't like about the Call of Duty franchise, I, I, it's hard to say that you're a fan, but the, and, and also say there's a thing about it you don't like. Um, and that's, um, I don't believe they tell the full story. In fact, they make it a point not to, uh, in a lot of cases. It's a very slanted version of events. Uh, a lot of the times it's uh, been slanted towards the Americans. In uh, Call of Duty World at War, um, it was very slanted towards the uh, Russians as well. Um, the war didn't start in 1944, uh, as this new video game would suggest, and that's what they've gone ahead and done, is figure, well, as soon as the Americans got involved, that's when this war started. That's not true at all. Uh, World War II was um, 20 plus years in the making. And without World War I, there wouldn't have been World War II. And there wouldn't have been World War I if uh, greedy business leaders weren't taking more than their share of the pie to fulfill their lust for wealth and power. Now, I'm not saying the Germans were good guys. I'm just saying they're not getting a fair shake in the way history is told. A lot of people go, well, there are so many different opinions out there on the subject. For most people, they're just plain ignorant of uh, what World War I and II were about. Um, there are amateur historians such as myself with my own constructive opinion. Um, there are people who have a 
devoted opinion based on perhaps their Canadian, American, British, French heritage. And then there's the ones who have their committed opinions and beliefs on the Soviet side. And um, I don't feel as though they really... Uh, there's no easy way to say this. Um, America has used World War II as an excuse to look like the good guys and that they do nothing wrong since, uh, since after World War II. And uh, the fact of the matter is there's a lot of aspects that a lot of people are just plain pig ignorant about. That uh, a lot of American business leaders and political um, uh, officials uh, helped the Nazis gain power and intentionally put a blind eye to um, the atrocities they committed. Uh, there are reasons beyond um, a politically correct millennial's comprehension on war. Um, the fact is, it's not a nice thing, but inevitable. It's inevitable. Uh, you, you can't get around it. Uh, and it most certainly couldn't be gotten around you know, 75 plus years ago, it was going to happen. And the thing I got against these video games is they make it all look like, no, it's not the Western powers uh, who did anything to bring about this war. It's all the Germans. The Germans are the bad guys. And, um, you know, it's not that complicated a history. And believe me, there are books that, you know, clearly define uh, exactly what went on, how it went about, and who was wrong there, who was right here, um, when the people were right, what things did they do wrong before, because nobody's perfect, and um, the people were wrong, did they ever do anything good, and all sorts of things. And um, it's, it's there's, there's a lot of things like, um, okay, I'll start with this. Uh, one of the things I got a beef with with uh, the Call of Duties is this uh, camaraderie And that's basically this uh, band of brothers mentality that they're all friends and things like that. Oh, don't, don't get me wrong, a lot of... Uh, uh, veterans uh, became friends after the war and have known each other uh, uh, the rest of their lives and that's very cool but you also get guys and there were more of them than they admit to um, who were exactly like snafu in Pacific uh, if you remember uh, that miniseries snafu was a character played by Rami Malek uh, he played uh, Mr. Robot in a TV show for Netflix, I believe. Uh, it might have been HBO. I, I, you know, I didn't actually watch it. I meant to get around to doing it, but I, you know, I just never got into it. I have so many TV shows that uh, I want to watch. Like I, I bought the first season of um, The Sopranos, and I just wanted to revisit that, but I haven't had the time. Uh, well, anyway, the thing is. He's a very unpleasant character in the Pacific, and they watered it down big time, his unpleasantness. In real life, the guy was an asshole. And there, there are assholes in, um, in Saving Private Ryan, um, the Pacific, Band of Brothers. Uh, those are the first movies, really, well, they add so many more dimensions to uh, World War II with the advancement of special effects uh, and uh, the ability to tell the story. And they hint off more when, uh, when uh, people are assholes. Um, 
Yeah, um, but that's really downplayed in the Call of Duties. Like, basically, they're all buddies, but... You know, yeah, it just wasn't like that. Uh, because you look at a modern day society today and you go how many of the people that I know uh, or or anything are indeed assholes themselves uh, now imagine being way back then in 1939 and going well uh, public opinion actually understanding um, social uh, events and things like that from an unbiased uh, reasonable perspective uh, it was backdated back then um, you know people were more prone to hate uh, they were more prone to anger uh, unreasonable intolerance and uh, slowly but surely hopefully people are you know evolving into a more understanding individual where they don't get mad for no reason and uh, they don't act out of pure ignorance when it comes to formulating opinions on complicated subjects um, but I don't think we're actually going in that direction I think really what's happening is um, people are shifting their prejudice uh, from the traditional well traditional uh, prejudice would be racism uh, it's being more shifted over towards um, a more politically correct uh, prejudice uh, this is a most definite fact that there are people out there who are very intolerant to um, whatever ideas they don't get along with, they don't agree with. And uh, the whole point of this conversation is um, I feel that the Call of Duties have a very narrow-minded view on World War II. They only tell part of the story. It's like everything, uh, you know, before, uh, near the end of World War II didn't happen. Or it was just some vague bad thing that the Germans were doing and that was it um, they didn't, didn't talk about you know all the um, horrible things that were going on in the world that didn't have anything to do with the Germans like for example the Japanese were uh, attacking the Chinese uh, in the uh, early 30s. A lot of people don't know that though. They don't care. They just loop them in with the Nazis and then that's the story. When in actual fact uh, the Imperial Armies of Japan and the Nazi Third Reich were two separate armies fighting two separate wars. And uh, to be honest with you, the Japanese um, they got um, a slap on the wrist in comparison to um, the Germans as far as uh, public image, as far as uh, demonization and all that. They really did. In fact, it's popular belief that the Americans were evil because they dropped atomic weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, and to be all honest with you, uh, they deserved it. I don't feel even the remotest bit bad about it. Probably not going to like me for what I had to say about that. And you know what? I don't care. I, don't, I just don't care. Um, a lot of innocent people got killed. But guess what? Um, that's the sacrifice uh, the Imperial Armies of Japan were willing to make. Um in order for their military conquest. And you go, well, why can't you apply that to the Germans? The Germans did pay for their military conquest. They were occupied by the Soviets until a more recent memory. Uh, whereas the Japanese were not occupied by anyone. Well, 
the Americans had a heavy hand there, but it's not quite the same thing as um, the horrible things that happened to the German children after World War II and the Soviets took over East Germany. The untold, untalked about, uh, very bad thing. Um, I'm not saying that it got a whole lot better in, on, in, in the West German uh, side, but it, it most certainly was better because, uh, as General Patton said, um, that um, it's a shame that the uh, Germans fell into the hands of uh, the savages, uh, the Russians. I'm paraphrasing, I, I forget the exact quote he said. But um, uh, the Soviets were very, very unreasonable, very intolerant, and a throwback on the way how they dealt with the remaining Germans that they had in their uh, occupied zone. And this is all relating to the, the greater aspect of the war and going well, the Germans invaded Russia after beating the crap out of the French and it, the French were assholes in their own way. You saw all the fucked up things they did in, in North Africa. Uh, that's nothing new. The British were no saints either. They went around doing bad things. Uh, the Americans were just blossoming into the uh, country that does bad things on a regular basis now. Um, everyone was running around doing bad things. And it's because certain individuals that couldn't be controlled within those countries with either political, military, or financial powers were more unchecked. They, were, they, they had more flexibility in exercising their power and uh, getting what they wanted and having no restrictions to stop them and I'm like I'm annoyed that uh, a video game cannot be made I'm not saying solely from a German perspective but I'm saying have their story incorporated have a German campaign um, a lot of people, they don't want to hear their story. They, they just want to snuff them out. It was The story is just the Americans defeating them because they did evil. As simple as that, end, end of story. And that's absolutely ridiculous. It's stupid. Uh, you know, I, I really would like to say, well, I'm born in Canada. I'm a Canadian patriot. And... Um, Therefore, everything Canada's ever done, um, I feel it's a part of me. But that wouldn't be true. I'm one of these people that um, I can sprechen Sie Deutsch if I have to. Um, I can speak um, Russian if I have to. Uh, read Cyrillic if I have to. Um, depending on certain situations on who's doing what and how they're going about doing it in certain things uh, I'm not restrained to my own country at least I wouldn't like to think so I mean physically I probably would be because uh, you know shit hits the fan they're, they're gonna close borders and stuff like that but I mean um, I'm not saying Paul and Edward Snorden and just you know, give the FU to the United States and then run off to, I think he's in Russia right now or something like that. I, I don't even know where he is. I, I don't keep up to date with that. Uh, but, you know, balancing everything out, taking things from a uh, responsible for pos uh, position, and understanding what is clearly wrong. And who is an asshole running around doing things that you don't like? And do other people see that asshole? Is he an Adolf Hitler who goes and makes big speeches and has a lot of pictures taken of him and is, you know, doing this and that and takes full credit for it? Is he like that? 
or is or are they um, some sort of slithering shadow creeping behind the scenes uh, pulling the strings um, doing evil things a faceless entity maybe it's a singular individual maybe it's an organization maybe it's whatever but um, uh, there most certainly were people out there like that within every country um, people like that within Germany used Adolf Hitler and Adolf Hitler um, if they didn't find him they'd have found somebody else to do the job but he was more than willing because he wanted to be someone he wanted to be the greatest military leader of all time on par with Napoleon Bonaparte and um, it uh, did get him killed in the end and you know um, that was just how the cards were dealt that's that's how it all came down um, but so many bad people got away in World War two and um, they weren't all Germans. They weren't all Nazis. Uh, and the way the story's been told ever since then, getting back to the video game here, is a very slanted um, Western opinion. And I wouldn't feel the need to defend uh, the Germans in World War II because they, some of them did do bad things. Some of them didn't. I don't consider it if a German soldier gets ordered to uh, go to a village and kill enemy combatants. I don't consider that an evil thing at all. That was just what had to be done. You, you can't say no to these people. And uh, these people exist in the American military, British military, the then uh, Soviet military and now the Russian military every army in the world has people out there they give orders and you cannot say no to them so those idiots you get on the internet going oh he was just following orders what a pussy <laughs> there, people who say that are probably douchebags who um, let's say they work at McDonald's has some uh, little geek with pimples uh, and uh, bad breath and uh, an overbite uh, telling them what to do and they can't say no to him how are you gonna say no to a sergeant or uh, some other uh, tough in in the army how are you gonna say no to them you, you can't and if you're a youngster going in because a lot of people go, oh well, uh, enlisting age is 19, uh, you're old enough to think for yourself then. Actually, you're not. I remember when I was 19 and um, I knew the type of lies that were surrounding my life and how they were able to deceive me back then. I know that now, wouldn't work on me now, but if I were 19 again, it would work on me. And that's getting back to these video games. They got a very slanted opinion on the war. Uh, they deliberately ignore important facts about it. And uh, war is generally demonized, uh, which is fair to say, but it's done in such a way that people are not interested in learning the mechanics of uh, why war happens in the first place. Um, like th there were many reasons for World War II, uh, but a pretty obvious reason was the crippling uh, sanctions and the Treaty of Versailles against Germany. Like German children were starving in the streets. People had to go with wheelbarrows filled with money just to buy a loaf of stale bread. Uh, the Allied powers were completely unreasonable. And keeping in mind, this is when, uh, war, after World War I happened, and that happened because of their greed. Uh, 
and them stealing too many of the resources for themselves. Uh, I mean, the mentality of uh, governments back in the day where they just they didn't think about tomorrow, they just wanted to snatch what they could today. And, um, you know, it, hopefully the smarter people in society are getting smarter and uh, there's always going to be stupid people in the world. Uh, something you're going to have to accept. But um, This video game enforces um, a false image of, uh, of World War II. Um, obviously I haven't played it yet. I, I fully intend on buying it, playing it, analyzing it, and learning what I can from it because there most certainly are things this video game will be able to tell me about the war that I didn't know before. But, um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to be critical of it, and I'm not going to be um, disagreeing with it on certain points, because uh, I feel the lies they are going to tell about it are unfair, and they perpetuate a um, a um, ignorant view of uh, of war and uh, how about this one in particular came to be um, I think it's a great shame that uh, there isn't a German campaign where the story is more um, it is how it is um, there's you know I, I don't want lies being told obviously uh, but uh, things uh, need to be told from them from their perspective too um, because some pig ignorant private in the American army is no better than someone, or no better or no worse than um, some pig ignorant private in the German army or the French army or any of those armies. I mean, I'm sure maybe um, the uh, war psychosis came into effect and they um, did regrettable things uh, that most certainly happened uh, but it happened in everywhere that was happening all the time everywhere it still happens a lot in the world today and um, a lot of certain crises would not have happened if the Germans had defeated the Russians there I say uh, no people aren't going to like that one at all, uh, particularly Russians, uh, but uh, fuck the Russians. The Russians are cunts, absolute cunts in so many ways, and uh, they almost brought about a war that was far worse than uh, the world war started by the Nazis. Um, uh, it's it's very easy to get a um, biased opinion on this subject. Perhaps you had a relative who fought in it. Maybe they got killed, wounded. Maybe it scarred them for life mentally. Uh, maybe they could never let it go. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, the only uh, relative of mine, whom I never met, who was in World War II, uh, was my grandfather on my dad's side, who uh, was in the Royal West Kent, was in India for nine years, doing God only knows what. I have no idea. And um, I don't know what his involvement in World War II. I got some theories, can't prove any of them. Um, but uh, 
I just I don't want certain uh, perceptions of the war to just disappear from history which there are people out there who want to do that uh, it is 1984 where they're just rubbing out parts of history that they don't like the sound of because it doesn't cater to the message they want to send however there is such a thing called the dark web and that is just a generic term you're not gonna go find this thing it is not Alice in Wonderland um, you're not gonna find that unless you're in the in crowd but there are video games that do tell things very truthful things about World War II not just from a German perspective but from perspectives that um, um, uh, any government wouldn't want being told because the thing is uh, the war can demoralize you so fast it can traumatize you so fast it can brainwash you so easily and uh, this Call of Duty World War 2 it's just gonna be another generic run-of-the-mill storyline usual kind of things I suspect camaraderie um, stern ma uh, sergeant um, usual sort of stuff I mean maybe you might be in a scenario that's a little bit different and the graphics are going to be amazing and the soundtrack is going to be perfect but good music and uh, you know nice scenes of uh, machine gun fire and shrapnel blasts and all that stuff is all nice but without perspective without looking at the picture as a whole by adding everybody's perspective uh, I feel the video game franchise is incomplete and we are getting to the time when every World War II veteran is getting close to dying they're all in their 90s any of them that are left um, so I think it's unfair that um, certain perspectives there just isn't enough time to tell them but, uh, yeah, getting back to this whole dark web thing I was telling you, uh, the story about those uh, other perspectives were told in kind of a more crude manner, uh, like mod video games and uh, just really basic rudimentary type stories and graphics, but uh, it's hard to make heads to tails of them. I had heard stories of a few which I would not mention. But, um, you know, big budget, amazing cinematography, um, it, it's just never going to happen. And characters like Brad Pitt are a big part of it. The guy's obsessed with being in World War movies. And he doesn't deserve to be there. Just because you got a handsome face maybe he had a couple relatives who were important people in World War II. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that much about the guy. All I know is he's in a lot of cheesy American style World War II movies that uh, either make light of um, the situation like Inglorious Bastards or it's all the Germans are bad like Fury and uh, Brad Pitt's supposed to be the all-American hero in this and then he's in that stupid movie you know what I even forget what it's called I, I'm you know I'm gonna make it a point to now remember where it's called where he's like oh the United States is just the business so on one hand he's going uh, yes I'm the all-american World War two hero and on the other hand he's shitting on the states um, so he's picking and choosing who his friends are and who's not and uh, I don't agree with him and I think he's got his uh, gigantic colossal 
brown nosing to the Jews nose in this video game. I guarantee it. He totally does. And uh, he won't be in the credits or anything like that. And he won't make any public statements about it for sure. But I know for a fact that he's in there like a dirty shirt. I can't prove it, of course. I have limited resources. But you don't make so many video uh, movies that he's made uh, with such, um, you know, uh, they're, they're powerful statements, even if they are comical movies, even if they are slanted movies, whatever. They're, they're powerful statements. Uh, they, they went up on the big screen. A lot of people saw them. A lot of people got brainwashed by them. And, um, you know, uh, certain things um, I cannot abide by. There's certain evil that uh, people don't know about. I'm not going to say I'm an expert on those subjects because I am not. But I'm not ignorant of the fact that evil has happened in this world and particular individuals have gotten away with it. And because we don't know who those people are is no excuse to say that everything's been set right, the story's over, this is how it was, that's the end of it. Uh, which is kind of what like Call of Duty's trying to do. They're trying to say, argument over, this is the way it was. And uh, they're telling it from a biased perspective. One that I uh, don't entirely agree with. Uh, for, you know, many reasons. Um, but uh, very hard to learn about this sort of stuff because uh, the minute you're going to try to learn about it, you're going to run into someone who um, won't agree with you. And rather than try to build you up so that you can have a constructive argument with them or debate or conversation even, uh, maybe because they don't not agree with you, maybe that's it. Um, they will just... Zip. End of conversation. This is their perspective, and they'll um, avoid further conversation, just because they could detect the train of path, the direction that you're going in, uh, and they either don't want to waste their time arguing with you, or uh, totally uh, intolerant to even the thought of anyone coming along and. Uh, trying to change their opinion, or not even change their opinion, but even just having um, an established opinion of their own that contradicts theirs. They don't even want you having that. Because uh, they would view that as competition to their beliefs. Um, they want to deride. They want to take all the information and make your argument sound stupid before you even started. And they do this over the generations by controlling the history. Before it was books, now it's video games. And uh, to learn about history, learn about all the ins and outs of power and control and government policy and all these crazy things happening at once, uh, people will just talk to you like you're stupid. Uh, they don't want you to learn anything. And um, I don't respect people who uh, hoard information and intentionally keep people ignorant. And sometimes they do this under the guise of enlightening them. Anonymous, for example. Perfect example of uh, organization that tells you nothing acts like they tell you something goes we're informing you we're protecting you we're this and that they don't show themselves and in reality 
All they want you to do is be content with the idea that you know nothing. Uh, they want to go, he knows nothing, we can move along. And uh, that's all they want to do. And these video games, uh, although I'm really going to enjoy playing it, and uh, there are things to be learned from it, I will be unsatisfied with it until I see a more complete version. And I think there are more complete versions, and they will have terrible graphics and um, impossible to beat missions and uh, I don't know poor voice actors. Name it, you you name it. But they'll they'll spin a story that uh, contradicts the mainstream version of events. Anyway. Uh, I've thrown out some ideas there, and uh, I know some people haven't thought a thing about any of that sort of stuff. Uh, sometimes they don't want to, sometimes uh, they don't think to, uh, sometimes they're too stupid. Um, anyway, uh, Call of Duty World War II coming out November 3rd. I may pre-order it to get the beta version. Um, that might be cool. Uh, I'll think about it. I got some time, November 3rd, uh, some distance away. It's only uh, April the 28th right now, so uh, I got time to think about it. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one.